Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Hack Check Podcast. I'm very excited today to welcome Abdulaziz Kunat. He's fighting on the 25th of August at uh, Insane Boxing Promotions. Uh, Abdulaziz, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really, really, really excited to, to, to chat to you a little bit about, about your story. Um, I've seen a little bit about it, but it's, it's good to always obviously hear it from the source. Before we get to, you know, your start in boxing and things like that, um, you're fighting on the 25th for the SA title. Yes. What are your thoughts on the fight and uh, the event as a whole and, and your opponent? What are my thoughts of the fight? Um, I think I'm well prepared for this fight. I think I'm ready to, to claim my spot as a champion. Um, thoughts on my opponent? Uh, he's a good fighter, but I, I don't think he's better than me. And what what I really want is what he has. Mm. And that's mine, the belt, the South African title. Mm. Have you, um, how much of him have you have you seen? Have you, do you just have seen a little bit of footage or, I mean, do you not worry too much about the opponent? You just have your game plan and the opponent almost doesn't matter. I have my game plan. I've seen previous fights of him. Uh, I have competed for the national title before. Mm-hmm. And he fought also the guy that I've, I've fought. So he lost to that guy. And then I seen other couple of fights of him. He's, he's very vulnerable. Uh, and, and, and I believe when, when, when I get my chance, when I get my chance, I will, I'll make sure of it. Mm. No, definitely. And, and just the event as a whole. I mean, I was chatting to Vikile the other day. It, it's it's kind of like a, he was saying it's kind of like a comeback event for for Cape Town boxing. Is is that also the way the way you see it? Yes, uh, there hasn't really mu- been much going on here in Cape Town. More more events been happening outside of Cape Town, like mm. Joburg or East London, Durban. But it's it's really good for 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 Cape Town, you know, because I believe like our city is beautiful. Like boxing can be massive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Cape Town, we just need we need the the promoters like we have Savas, Jackie Price, and all the other guys. And for what is happening now, mm. why why has Cape Town been so quiet in the last while? Because I think you know everybody that I've spoken to in the boxing world has all mentioned you know obviously Johannesburg has been the big sort of mecca for let's call it for lack of a better term of boxing. Is that just always been that way, or you know, has Cape Town had its time, gone a little bit quiet, and now it's it's making a comeback? I I I think it's more maybe like funding. You know, we have a lot of talent aside. We just need more exposure. Mm. We need more exposure because, like in Joburg, like they say, it's the the city of gold, and a lot of fighters do relocate to Joburg, whether you're from Cape Town, Eastern Cape, and to take their career to the next level mm. because there's more exposure. Uh, I think proper investors in that, but it's because also people understand what is boxing about the business side, you know. Mm. They say boxing is, the professional side of boxing is a business. No, and the amateurs is like, you can have a, a hobby or passion or you Mm. know but boxing professional boxing is a business Mm. so so when when did you start boxing how old were you um 20 20 years old really i started at 20 years old but i always been a fighter and i i fought i fought and i started boxing at the age of 20 years old Mm. and i believe just a month apart, and then I had my first tournament. Really? Yes. Sure. I started boxing in prison, mm-hmm. Drakenstein. Mm. And I trained about a month, and a month apart, and then they had this, they always have this event, it's the Madiba tournament. So they have this tournament, you you fight the, like twice the day you win, you win the semi-finals and then you go to the finals the next day mm. and I won the finals and I became like the champion of the tournament pres- a present champ like nice okay yeah. yeah and then I knew boxing was for me I never 
look back to from there. Mm. I believe like boxing was for me, and then I just took it further from there. But now, so so usually like you do amateur or white collar, and then you go to professional. So what is that? An amateur were those amateur events yes, in those prison? Yes, those were amateurs because they were associated with the amateur organization, uh, Sonabo. Mm. So I was fighting under Sonabo. Yes. So so how do you get involved in in a program like that in prison? Because I mean, obviously they have to be trainers and things like that. So, so did Sonabo like years ago just invest and and have that as a sort of a, an incentive um, for prisoners, or how do you know how that whole story came about about the whole boxing in in prison with Sonabo? Um. So, uh, so I did a documentary before of my life, the time of being in prison, um, and I believe Mr. Berti Berti for he. He was one of like the head of the of the multi-purpose and things that are happening located to the sport. And I heard his story. He said like I don't know why back he like he wanted this program to be a part of this like this incentive. What you mm. said to be part of the sport to um, boxing and and apparently he got it right and and look there it gave me the opportunity. Mm. When I came out, I became a professional, and look today I'll be fighting with the South African title, and I believe I'll be making history once I claim that. Mm. But so so okay so so they have you have the program. Is it something that they just mention to everybody and say, okay, look guys, for those of you that that want to box, you can come box, or how do they actually pick who gets to box in these in these tournaments? So so they they will. Come like a Ezra that will come around and then there will be sports. So there's like soccer, mm. rugby, uh, soccer, rugby. You can attend school. Like there's programs for you to attend. Right. Yeah. To okay. now keep you busy or recreational programs and compete at mm. the level. And then I remember I was uh, I I was attending school also at the time because I didn't finish school when I was younger, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought I could fold that space the time that I'm in prison, serving my time. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered they put, there was karate and boxing. And because I was a fighter, I mm -hmm. like, and I had art, and then I gave my name down for karate and boxing. And then I was going out for karate for a time, boxing didn't yet go out. And then I went out for, for karate and then like you know the prison system can change at any time and karate wasn't going out anymore but i was still attending school then boxing started going mm -hmm. then i attended the program doing the exercises in it so i remember one one day I, w I went to school so i didn't know that the boxers are also gonna go out uh, at the and same time I, yeah and then when i came back all the guys came from the boxing and they were like hey Today we were doing sparring oh, and no. all that. And that was one thing that I was looking forward to. Mm. So I thought, okay, tomorrow I'm not going to go to school. Mm. And then the next day I attended the, the boxing program. And we were, there's a ring. So there's a, a multi-purpose. There's boxing bags. There's a proper ring. Mm. Like everything is there like for you. And then we were all sitting like in the in the square so they i remember mr Fori was like choosing there was another guy uh rothman i i can't just come to his name he was also one of my trainers mm. at the time but he would train us like soldiers you know because he was a kickboxing world champion okay and then they would pick like a guy and another guy mm. so they would spar and then the one who who's getting beaten will sit down then they will choose another guy okay yeah so yeah. eventually they chose me and i just started like going out swinging and i like was hitting the guy a lot and then he sat down chose another guy and i did the same and then the guy sat down chose it so the third guy i remember he he punched me so hard my goal he whooped to the back then I, it made me like cross me so I went at him and I also got a bit of him and then 
from there, like, started also taking the training serious because mm. they could see there was potential in me. Mm. So, so obviously, you, you mentioned, like, uh, like, a lot of fighting when you were younger, like, in the streets and things like that, but that's obviously very different to, to boxing. There's, there's strengths you can take with. You know, like you mentioned, the heart and, you know, being able to take a punch and will, and, yes. and will exactly. And, and actually really, I mean, throwing throwing a punch even, you you start to yes. see what works and what doesn't work. The technique behind everything. Yes. How, I mean, you, you had a fight after a month, basically. So did, did your coaches um, have to impart much on the technique side for you? Or were you already kind of good good with the technique? I think because I was, I was I, like for my height, I'm tall for a boxer and they, they like we worked all of the basics, the jab, double jab and throwing the right and from there I just, just worked on that and, and that won me the tournament. Mm. So you don't have to have too much, I mean the heart's there, the wall's there. So, you know, and most basics. of yeah, and the basics, yeah, exactly the basics, yeah. Um, where did you, wh which part of Cape Town did you grow up in? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, is yeah. it? Okay, do you still live there now or? I'm currently, yes, yeah, still is living in Brooklyn. Still there? I've, I've left Brooklyn, came back, you know, but like most of my life was in Brooklyn. Mm. What, what is, what is Brooklyn like? I mean, I, I've... I've driven through it past a couple of times, but I mean, you know, is it, was it sort of a rough, like very rough upbringing or? Not exactly. There's like now Brooklyn is, is, is very much changed to what it used to be, you know? Um, but I could say it's fair enough in between, you know? Yeah. Mm. So there's a little bit of everything basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, there's, and there's a time for everything. You okay, know? yeah, for sure. And um, like fights and stuff like that, was just, that just part and parcel of like going through the area, you might see people that you don't like and then you just end up getting in a fight? Yeah, you know, as youngsters, when you grow up, you want to prove yourself to your friends and for yourself to show like you were really a man and and especially as a, as a, as a boy, mm. you know, you don't want to be seen like as a weakling or in that kind of way mm. so eventually it escalates and it gets worse and you make bigger better decisions in your life but yeah and it will eventually it gets up to you man mm. how often and are you getting in fights a lot like weekends is it weekends Mostly especially on the weekends. because we're going out clubbing oh uh, yeah and that's where we see other people coming from other places in our place because mm. it's our place, you know, and and that's how it just gets, it gets worse and worse, and then you make enemies. Like, then you know, okay, next time you must look out for this one or that mm. one. That's how it goes. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a rough life. I can imagine, you know, to to have to like. Like you say, you make enemies. That's a good way to, to explain it. Like you have to know, like the more the more you go out and things like that, you got to keep sort of half looking over your shoulder almost. Yeah. But it's it's I think like all 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 boys go through something like that where you want to be hanging on the corners, mm. you know, and being on the streets, going out clubbing, in your crew and things like that. Checking the girls. Checking the girls and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all goes so it all goes so so like together and inevitably most of the time the fights are, are about involved it's, involved girls, eh? It definitely, definitely that comes also a part of everything. Mm. And you know, uh sometimes also like you get caught, police catch you fighting or you doing anything wrong, you go in for this to the cells for the weekend or oh really yeah and that's how it came like i said things get get caught up to you and then one day you make big bigger better decisions and you go to prison mm. and i went to prison i've served my time and i've learned boxing in the time i've served my sentence and like as God's direction in my life. Mm. 
Mm. And I never look back really. Mm. How Just long did, kept on going. How long did you go in for? I was I was about three years, nine months that I served until I was given parole. Mm. And then my probation time I served outside. And also in that time I was doing professional boxing because it was keeping me out of trouble. Yeah, and getting me like to places, you know. So with my parole officer, that communication was there because I was in newspapers, I was in TV, so they could see, okay, this guy is really making a mm. proper progress in his life. Mm. Did you go as a juvenile or as an adult? As a, as a juvenile. As a juvenile, yes. okay. And then do you then, um, how old were you when you went, when you went in? I was 19 years old. Okay, 19. I was 19 years, but I was convicted at the age of 18. Okay. And then and I, had, uh, I had that case going about one year and then I eventually got sentenced, yes. And then do they, do they at a certain age, then switch you over to the, so do you go from the juvenile facility to the adult facility or? And now you, you so stay? you, so the, the time that you there, you can write a request if you want to leave, but also like with your case of, you work with a, you got the case of, case officer in, so it all depends if you if they want to send you away if you a problem or whatever the mm. the thing is. But what I was doing, I was doing something good because everyone knew me in prison mm. to being like the boxer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then does that obviously help with your with your parole because it's it's a good activity. It's part of the recreational part of yeah. it, right? So that that did really help because I became a champion and. I was also attending the programs due to my case. Mm -hmm. So, because it's also like for anger in anger management mm -hmm. and boxing, like really help with all that built up inside the person, you know. Mm. So, did you see, so you would say you were like fairly, like had, had a lot of anger when you were younger? Built in me, yes. Built in. And I, was, I wasn't really much like of a, I'm not really much an outspoken person. Mm. Um, I like to keep things in, you know. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, it's, it's like the way I speak, like express myself. Through anger. Yeah. Mm. And boxing's a good outlet for that. Yeah. yeah. Really, I can spend hours in the gym eating the bag and, mm. you know, if maybe the day didn't go well, even also if the day is well. Mm. Because it's just the way, like how I, I focus all that energy, whether it's negative or positive, in Into a boxing. proper way. Mm. And now, when you're doing the boxing program, um, is the like are the people, the other the other inmates in the prison, are they like supportive of you, or they're trying to get you to not do it, to maybe stay in in longer or anything like that? Or so when I arrived. At Drakenstein, I was first at Polsmo. So how long were you at Polsmo for? I was, I think, about a week or the year round because of my sentence. I had a 12 year sentence, which five years of that was suspended, and then a seven year term prison sentence. So I had to leave Polsmo where everyone is serving the sentence. It's not like where there's people on trial mm. as everyone is serving a sentence. So I went up to Drakenstein. Yeah, so the time I was there, I arrived. I was still like, you know, you have to work your way up to be, you get a, like a C group, B group, and an A group. So the C group has not much benefits. And then the like B the group is like, right? you get, yeah. So I was at the maximum se section when I arrived and then I was about like six or six, seven months there. And then I was like elevated to a B group and then eventually I went to the mediums where you get more like privileges. Mm. Yeah. Because on the maximum you only exercise like about like 10 minutes. Or 10 less. minutes? 
or less even because if they see like there's suspicious activity that is happening and then you go inside yeah and then that's also the time that i i started att- attending school mm, so you busy. get that only that privilege and a little bit mm. of exercise most of the time you spend your the time in the cell mm. are the cells in drakenstein like in the maximum in the maximum portion on in level c is it uh, multi like a lot of people in one cell or are you isolated or how do they so it's a section so i was on d section and then there's like four rooms like separate rooms yeah okay so room one room two room three room four okay yeah so we will have like a mount limited amount of people that is in the room maybe sometimes the prison can get overcrowded that can go up to like 30 people or more how many is it like supposed to be like in a cell how many is it how big is a cell a cell is is pretty as as big okay it so it's like big. a nice big space at least yeah. but 30 is still a lot of people yeah, so you're cramped a, in a place as a, as a, as a, as a, yeah and how, how long are you like locked in the cell for so like on the maximum we most of our time is only the time when we get out is to go eat that is like five minutes there and back oh, you can fetch your food and eat it in the cell you or you can eat it in the 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 kitchen okay so there's like a section where you can eat and then some guys won't some of us we won't eat maybe at they will eat it rather in the room or mm. you know but most of the time you spend your your time in the cell there yes and like showers and stuff like that is it also in in the cell or is it it's also in the cell yes. okay what is it like one shower for 30 people or two two, two for 30 two, people two showers but do we like the no one will sh- shower like at the same time yeah yeah you know yeah yeah and then there's like two toilets two sure. showers who keeps the two basins clean? so we will run a program the okay under each other like how things are going to go about okay so within the actual cell itself so it's not the prison that has says okay it's yeah, time clean okay so you, it's like you govern that but yourself at least yeah okay so uh, mainly like the with them was the time when they lock us up is around about just after 12 one o'clock then the masters go then we spend the rest of our day in the cell in the afternoon time one o'clock yes okay that's like when we have our last meal we only get served twice really yeah breakfast and and lunch what do they give you for for breakfast and lunch uh for breakfast we get uh pop yeah yeah just so plain pop pop with one teaspoon sugar and, <laughs> and a little really? bit of milk yeah yeah and then in the afternoon we will get like always millis mm. uh depending what is on the menu but once you're so used to the time being in prison you will know what's every yeah. day on of the week on the menu so we, but meat wa- won't be that much it's more like gravy and mm. like vegetable but the there's no like proper nutrition really in mm. the food like to make you strong in it sure you must be hungry all the time almost yeah and then we get like eight slices of bread so that's like how to fill that to uh yeah. substitute okay and is there like a like a canteen or like a tuck shop that you can if you yes if you get cash so there is at least that so when someone now you get family visits so then they will put money on your property mm. and then once a month you will get that that privilege to go to the shop okay yeah okay and um how often can family come visit you and stuff like that in the so so still on on level c like how often do they get to visit you not much um i can't exactly say how much but is is not that much and after that time the times that they visit you they they can't come again and even Ever. though you yeah they until the next month okay. because then it's like it renews so yeah. even though your family comes and your visits are all finished they have to turn them back sure. traveling maybe from and wherever. it's for from... coming going to Paul. Mm. you know yeah and then like after that time going to mediums you get more privileges so when you elevate to a b group you can your your visit is longer so when you're a c group i think it's like 30 minutes that Once you have a month. with your family yeah i think it's if i'm sure it's like two visits for the month Jeez. and then when you're a b group you get like 
45 minutes mm. and more visits maybe four i think mm. and then there's like other programs that you can attend while you're in prison there's a library and like the sports activities they also might like a sports academy mm. section yeah where they see those guys are really serious and he got the potential and then they put you over the years mm. i was actually i've been to drakenstein prison before like on the grounds um because mm. you can you can go in and you can drive through it's a massive massive place eh? yeah and it's also like self-sufficient with the with the food i think for yeah, most most because of the food it's eh? like a farm it's, it is a farm legit a farm yeah and these is like uh officials that stay on the premises yes yes as you drive in almost they're like right there yeah. on the in the yeah uh, in the front and yeah. the terrains and that stuff yes. yes and then um okay so then then you you obviously then worked the way up and then started to do the boxing thing um what was so how many fights did you say you had in prison so while you were in prison a recorded fight like under sonabo i had four mm. which three of those is the time when i i won and then i had like one loss because for the for the following year we had the kind of same matiba tournament but i believe like this these people they they were targeting me like because you won the year before yeah yeah so like they knew me that time they used to call me baby face i was a lot younger and look like babies in my face and mm. yeah so then i fought my for my first fight the following year and then i lost to a guy named Gary Boyson and then like that like woken something up in me like i was training crazy people thought i was crazy the mm-hmm. way i used to train in the prison cell because we spend most of our time in the cell mm-hmm. and yeah. then we would get time to go train at the facility mm-hmm. a lot of people say their first loss is actually good for them because that's when they learn like they say you win or you you win or you learn yeah So and and it ignites a lot of people get that fire lit in them and it ignites and they never want to feel that feeling again yes. of losing ever you you as not really a nice feeling but it also like wakes up another side of you that oh like the potential that you really mm. should be mm. and it can maybe maybe humble you a little bit to know that you need yeah. to work harder and and do more so so what is the process of then getting out because you you got out a little bit earlier so do you then is it like you see in movies they go through in front of a parole board and then they you know like plead the case kind of thing or what is the process of of getting out on on parole so the the pro, the program can go also about like the the crime that you are convicted for so you have to do your programs was it uh your social worker and do the programs at this part of it and then you will appear in front of the parole board and where you where also you have to do a victim dialogue like of that person that is deceased you know so do you put yourself in there like you you are the victim basically is that am i understanding yeah, correctly like in the program you will learn all those things that you know and then also like to get approval from the family member you know okay yeah so yeah. i had to get the approval from from the from the guy's mother mm. and i think she the time when when i was serving my time i lost my brother through through gang violence he got shot in sure. 2015 yes sure. and i believe like this 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 uh, lady she became like a, a newborn christian and the time my my brother got shot so she is also loving she was loving in the area my mother told me a, a door was open so she was in the kitchen my mother and then the lady of of what of my my crime that I was convicted of the guy's mother she came to visit my mother because she know what the deed to to lose a mm. son you know and she forgave me she forgave me yeah. mm. that's oh, 
sure it's i can't imagine i mean it's yeah it must be uh, yeah it must be tough to to lose somebody but at least yeah so that's in the past obviously and you you got parole and you were able to get out what um you obviously wanted to start to box again as as soon as you got out so so what what did you do then did you go try find the, the first gym or did you speak to your trainer in prison to suggest somebody like how did you start getting so, more heavily involved in boxing on the outside so the time I, I was served, served time in prison i made a documentary about my life and then there's this guy's name warren Baines. so he helped me he knew the time when i was coming out he gave a word to the provincial boxing manager of cape town mm. like hey, the kid is really good he's what well, he's changing his life and and the provincial manager at that time was the mickey claus he gave me a chance he approved the license for me and when i came out i believe like not too long there was a event steve calicoda so warren got me on board to attend the event to mm. like witness live a professional event and it was like really outstanding the atmosphere and seeing like other guys fighting with no head cord and no sweater and things like that because mm. it's not the amateurs and i was impressed and i remember also at that time what i would do when i when i seen one of the coaches in either guy's corner and when they were close to me enough i would approach him and take the number yes to try to get contact yes mm. and that's how that's how I got into to to the professional ranks i believe i had my first i had an amateur fight and then i had my my first professional fight in september of 2017 not too long when i was released mm. and then i won my fight and then i was scheduled to fight again in november for twice one both two fights and then i just kept on continue continue winning i was like 10 fights undefeated mm. uh was scheduled to fight another guy from cape town baby jake so he was we fought in camps by on the same ball so it was more like a laminator at that time i fought a guy from eastern cape he fought a guy from eastern cape we won both won by kayo mm. and then we were supposed to fight for the south african title so he was like i think 11 fights undefeated me 10 mm. undefeated so it was something big for cape town at that point in time and then COVID came and mm. we had other also uh problems because a promoter on that side wanted their boxer to fight for the south african title because i said i wasn't rated before i fought this guy that mm -hmm. was number two but i beat him and took his ratings yeah and mm -hmm. covid just flopped everything you mm -hmm. know like in life in general yeah for everybody with literally with everything for the, what two years straight i, I always to, say i can't tell you which were the difference between 2020 and 2021 likewise but it's one year to me now eh? likewise and then eventually uh i got the opportunity to fight for the south african title up in joburg against the guy from eastern cape so it didn't happen between me and this guy mm. from cape town and it's a fight that everyone wanted to see because you know they expected big things mm. and then i lost it on a controversial decision the split decision yeah which mm. I, i still believe i won that fight the guy was fighting dirty was hit butting me numerous of times you can't physically see it in the video but those who are there in attendance mm. it wasn't much but you could see like and plus getting two points deducted from him from his side mm. but i believe like god we, when i when they said the decision i just looked up and like okay it, it might be like that and then let me just put my trust in god and then you know you 
get a, a guy in like we human man and then i went to go watch the tape like over and over and then i was like really upset man mm. it was like my time but i believe like i've been i've been going by the side dreams delayed or in dreams denied that's why i'm getting this opportunity mm. again to prove myself to claim my spot and 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 it couldn't happen any better because it's happening where I am from from mm. Cape Town. I'm not saying it's a disadvantage to to anyone because anything can happen in the ring. But I believe in myself, mm. and I believe with all the experience over the years that I've learned that I'm way much better now than I ever been. Mm. Uh, yeah. What did you? I mean, like we said earlier about the losses and things like that. I mean, those experiences that some people have to go through to get better. Did you and I know it was controversial and and you said you 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 still think you won the fight but what what did you learn from that from that loss you know did that also drive you more now to to work harder and to to come back stronger I believe work harder also like on the mental side you know you your mind needs to be clear um sometimes you like even uh, Terence Crawford mentioned it like boxing can be also corrupt mm. i'm not pointing fingers at anyone you know but sometimes we can see physically even you as a fan can see like no this guy dominated this fight yeah that's why like in certain places you can't go fight because you have to win by a KO mm. and and it's and it's likely that it can happen because mm. we never know Yeah, you don't leave it to the judges because yeah. it's not just boxing. I've heard it a lot in boxing where people say there's like a lot of controversy with boxing. Um, depends on who's fighting who and where, but it's in in all sports uh, that are subjective. So it's 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 judged by judges. It's not like you know if you play a football match, you know uh, who wins the yeah. person the, the team with more goals. Yeah, that's not subjective. Yes, you know it's like that in MMA now. There was an event that people are are split about. A South African guy fought in. I don't know where they fought, but it's a Bahrain promotion called Brave, mm. um, and a lot of people think he won that fight. But they're obviously on the other side. They're saying no because he was fighting an American. And they wanted an American to win the win fight, the fight so, so it was yeah. a title fight, you know. So it's 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 a lot of sports are controversial like that. It's not not just to boxing, yeah. but in instances, obviously, where especially like in amateurs and people are coming up and stuff, it's sad to see if people. Like we know, if you watch a sport, if you watch boxing, you watch MMA, you watch whatever sport yeah. it is, you know through past experience of watching, you know what the judging criteria should be when it's a robbery. Yeah. Sometimes it's close. You might not know which way it goes, but when it's a robbery, everybody knows. Yeah. The the there's sometimes we it could go either way, and then you know, okay, this guy did edge it, mm. but you know. Sometimes I believe we should be fair anywhere we go. Doesn't matter because it's the sport, and that's why, like they say, it's the business. Mm. And we we like you say we see it everywhere, even on the highest level. Mm. That you see also decisions get made like that. Do you did you watch Triple G and Canelo the first time? Yes. Who do you think won that fight? Triple G. I also think Triple G won that fight, Triple and they called it a won that fight, they called it a draw. Yeah, I mean that's that's the highest level, and that's controversial. Yeah, and and, uh, and Wilder and and Fury won. Do you think that was a draw? I think I uh, I'm not too sure, but also with Fury, like the like the time, the way they counted was too long. Way too they long. They could have also called that fight off, like by a, by a KO. Mm. Did you see the slow where the, there was like a slow mo where they showed him getting knocked down, and from the time he gets knocked down, it's about five or six seconds before yeah. the ref counts. Start counting because normally once you drop, they already counting one, yeah, two, three, and they counted him get, eight. Eh? They gave him an eight count. Eh? Yeah, and he just woke up like Undertaker. That was yeah. <laughs> did you see some of the shorts where he's lying in? And, <laughs> and Wilder's like. Yeah. His eyes are just so big, like it took, what? Yeah, it took his. I feel that took it out of Wilder because that's that's yeah. his thing. He knocks people out, and they don't and they don't they get don't back come up. Come back, yes. And then Fury came back. Actually, and arguably won that round. 
Yeah. And then that's what gave them the draw. It was, it was also like the mental part of it because you don't expect that like if you like a, a knockout artist, like this guy is going to come back. Mm. So Especially you, Wilder. You need to prepare yourself in all aspects. Mm. Whether it goes the distance, whether it goes by KO. You know, like a lot of my fights went the distance. But I knock the guy down and eventually gets up. And then I think there, there was more of, I was inexperienced. Maybe like I have to work on finishing mm. a guy, you know. And I had also like hand injuries during fights while I'm fighting. My hand is swollen. Mm. You know, you can't eat properly. You only can touch the guy just to let him know that it is still there. Mm. Yeah, so... Like happened in the fight or like leading up to... In the fight. Really? Yeah. How, so, many, how many fights has that happened in? A uh, few of my fights where when like I find that my hands are swollen. Sure. So there was once in, I think, 2019, I fought this guy, uh, Dodi. I fought him twice already. So this for the second time, but he's like a strong guy. I mean, he doesn't give up. Mm -hmm. And he's like God bone. And in the fight, I, I hurt my hand. My hand was swollen, but I, I dominated the fight. And then I believe uh, I was still like after the fight, not too long. I took like a few days off. And then it was mentioned that there's another tournament happening the next month. And then the guy that was supposed to fight from Cape Town had an accident or something. So I had to fold up that spot. Just a month later. Eh? Yeah. And then I, so I was training with like a, Injury. not like a full recovery day. Mm. And then I went to fight this guy in the, in the next month of February. And I fought him, I knocked him down, but the fight went on and eventually I hurt my hand and then it was swollen in the glove. Can you, do you have like an adrenaline rush? Like you obviously feel it. But does the adrenaline and the moment and everything just push you through? I mean, obviously yeah. you have to keep you have to keep boxing because if you don't, then you might get knocked out. Yes. But I mean, you know, I, yeah. I think that adrenaline, that adrenaline and that rush is there. Like the competition is now; nothing matters. Mm. Everything else can come afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's a big problem with boxing. Like people, who, like even Floyd Mayweather had had big problems with his and hands. Injuries, yes. Yeah. I mean, you can think of or the amount of times you got to hit those bags, you know, especially the big bags. And then in your fights as well, there's sparring and there's all the fights. Yeah. I mean. But I, th I think it's more, you see, when 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 you're practicing, you, you practice with bigger gloves, 16 mm. to 14 ounces that you spar with. And then with eating the bag, you will wear like 10, 10 or 12 ounce and when you fight you're wearing eight ounce mm. so it's so a lot it's less much, padding yes so when you're eating you can feel like the guy's bone mm. like properly and obviously that can, it's bone against bone yeah so somehow maybe you can get injured mm. if you're also not eating properly you can't tell at that time you know mm. A lot of people don't realize how many hand injuries there are from fights. I mean, if you street fights, boxing, whatever yeah. it is, his bones are, are not as hard as it's a, not as steel. A, yeah, it's not especially steel. if you catch someone sort of on, on the top the of the head. Or, yes. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's a lot of like technique. Those guys that know how to to injure you. So even if you're throwing the jab, he will push his head forward mm. because you know this this bone is really hard mm. and you can hurt your hand that way. Mm. We used to, when we were at school, they brought out a new scrum cap. Because you know the normal scrum caps that you get, which like pads, everything? Yeah. Then the one day one guy came with a scrum cap where there was nothing here. And we're like, what the hell is this like <laughs> doing? But it, this is the hardest. This is the hardest part of your head over yeah. here. So like here, you obviously protect. But here is super hard. So a lot of times you see people like street fight videos, whatever, street fights, you check people throw overhands yeah. really high. And then it hits it on, top. hits on the top there. It's almost a broken hand straight away. Yeah, straight. Mm. But um, so so now just back to the fight here now. What's a, obviously the SA title? Um, when I was chatting to Jamie Jamie Webb, I don't know if you know. Um, yes, I do know Jamie Webb. Yeah, I'm long on. Yeah, okay. Long on this friends, yes, and we also fought. 
I think a few times on the same ball. Mm. Yeah. Because he he also he also said because um, he obviously just won the Western Cape uh, title recently, yes. and then he was also saying like for him the SA title is a title that he wants to win because you're the best in South Africa. Yeah, there's none of the like IBA you know WBC champion this champion yeah. you've got to do undisputed. It's essentially the undisputed in South Africa. Yeah, um, for me it's like because where I come from like prison learning boxing in prison and being a present champion and you know like I uh, I have the saying like also your 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 goals and your dreams get bigger when you achieve them like fights go by you mm. you're winning like getting into the ranks so you get closer to something like a Western Cape can become Western Cape champion was Western Cape champion before Fought for it before, but that time it was like a status. There wasn't no physical belt made. Yeah, and then how long ago was that? That was back in 2019. Okay. So in 2019, I fought five times. So I had the the two fights, the January, February. Yeah. And then I had a, I normally take a break when it comes to Ramadan time. Mm -hmm. And then after Ramadan, I, the fight was in August, and then I fought a guy. Um, Vilele Fanti for the Western Cape title was my first 10 rounds. But I feel like also like as the rounds, the more rounds it's better because then you can implement your game plan because like four and six rounds are just quick, too quick. And especially if you foot, when you look again, like what? The round five is now that the fight is almost finished. Mm. The, you barely feel like you left first gear. Yeah. 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 So 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 you fought for Western Cape title now. Then, like you we were saying, the SA, SA title. Um, if you if obviously you plan to win the SA title, probably defend it a couple of times, right? Yeah. Do you want to then go for something like intercontinental and go to the next thing and the next thing? Yes. Um, that that is the goal. You know that I wanna I wanna progress. What stage is not jump like the gun? Mm. You know what I mean? I wanna no progress. I wanna be a national champion. And even though that is, if I become champion, whether what is the plans for the future, if I defend or I relinquish, relinquish the title and fight like for now for world ratings and like African belt or mm. intercontinental to get you to that level where you fight maybe one day for a world title, God willing. Mm. What's the path to, to the... Let's call it big stage, you know, like if you if you want to go to like WC, WBC belts and things like that, what is the path uh, from South Africa usually? What path it's, do people it's take? It's all dependent on your 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 opponent, where is he rated? So the guy that I'm fighting is rated, um, I think like 80 something, but obviously your ratings fall back after time. You fall back in ratings if you're not active. Is that in so, the world now? Is 80? Yes. And and what what is that what is that just uh, as an organization or is it's that like, like in to all organizations all yes so okay. in your division you write it like I was the highest I was was at sixty something oh really wow. in the world but I wasn't too much active and then I fought and then I when I lost my mother and then I went to go fight. Like that fight didn't go too well, and I also lost that on a split decision. Mm. So obviously, I fall, I fell right back in the ratings, mm. and then I was still in the South African ratings. So I won my fight in November last year, so it made me again got like, up in the rankings yes, again, yes, mm. and became number one challenger because the other guys above me were. They either lost their fights, some moved up division, or they're not active. Mm. And that's how I got this opportunity again. Okay. So whereabouts in the rankings would you have to get if you... Like, where do people usually get in the rankings to start fighting on, on international events? Like, big international. Mm. Normally, what I see is normally uh, around, if you write it, under, under the top 50. 50? Yeah. Okay, so that's the magical so number. So you get better opportunity, but there's some guys like pro promoters will use you maybe for your writing. So mm. you also should watch that. So there has to be proper 
strategy going forward, you know. So you will look at the opponent, your team will do that and then assess, okay, we we can win this fight and this is for the rating and you will go up. Mm. There's got to be benefit for you winning it. Yeah. So so if you, obviously then if you win the SA title, you're number one ranked in South Africa. Oh, yeah. Well, the champion the is champion number, is. I mean, not the number one contender, but the number one ranked. Yes. The crown, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, what is the, I mean, so so in the next, so in the next step, so let's say like African champion or intercontinental champion, what ranking are they roughly? Do you know? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know exactly, depending also where is the guy rated. Sometimes you can fight for those belts, but the guy is not even rated, you know, or s- maybe even in the organization, like the ABU as I heard, like, it's like under the WBC uh, rating. Mm. So if you win that title, then you also start getting a rating in that. And then you get like belts. Uh, the WBO global like those are like valu- valuable belts to mm. get you in the big ratings like in the world ratings mm. so even maybe where you rated in in the world in your division that you won one of those belts gets you in a rating maybe in the top 15 of the proper world title of yeah. the 15 okay because I'm trying to get a picture of how you go like you know what the next step is and the next step so because obviously people would want to fight you for the rating then because you you'd be the champion of south africa yeah so it's all, all you, you lose everything pretty much if you do lose what's well, a it's a lot of risk yeah um but then how easy do you think it would be to then find fights from higher ranked people um you know if you win the title i think that you know like the south african belt keeps you keeps you active because you have to defend it every three months. So mm. the more activity, the the more your ratings also escalate. So right, because you climb the ratings even if you beat someone that's rated below you. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's almost like because I, I know obviously the MMA ratings because that's it's, it's it's exactly the same as the MMA ratings. Yeah. Then obviously if you beat someone rated high, then you you come pretty close to what their rating was. Yeah, Afterwards. so it's also good also getting international fights like guys from Philippines, like it's common opponents of mm. ours. Uh, Ukile fought a, f- a few people from Philippines. From Philippines. He was yes, saying, and, yeah. And he was, he was close to like fighting for a legitimate world title. Mm. Twice, yeah. I think. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Twice, he said. Yeah. You guys train together, eh? you and Ukile. Yes. What's it like training with him? Uh, is really great like you don't you can't buy experience mm. i think is i don't know how many fights 20 something mm. you know and that comes with experience like you know when someone is determined and they've been around the block like they know what is for what mm. so I, I learn a lot from him i learn a lot in my past experience also uh, like the time when i was up in Joburg also with the likes of Larato Dlamini, also other young prospects that are really good, mm. Kaiden Truta, Isma Kadri, and many to mention. If I don't mention them, <laughs> they're going to you know, get angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they so, see it, they be like, why didn't you talk about me? So so I, I can say I've, I've been around, mm. like for the good of, of things for, for where I've come from, not really having an amateur background. Mm. You know, I'll, you learn a lot really in the professional game because the amateurs and the professionals are way different. Mm. You can be a champion in the amateurs or have a pedigree, but once you lace those eight downs and you get punched, all that fall away. It goes, go, uh, it goes, goes straight away. away. Yeah. yeah. What, was the, what was the adjustment for you like when you were going from amateur to pro? Other than just getting hit with smaller gloves. What was the biggest adjustment for you? Uh, the biggest adjustment, I think, was like you... How can I say? I think it's a, a bigger platform. So people are more interested in professional boxing ways, really amateurs, like the atmosphere, like, there's the atmosphere. There's there's a lot to mention 
It's just that my mind is, is a little pressure bit. Is it pressure or what is it? Because it's a bigger stage, is it more pressure or is it just you You feel like you? it's a bigger stage, I need to rise to the occasion so you're more dedicated, yeah, work harder? There's dedication and like you have to rise up to the bar, you know. You don't want to go up there because at that time also, I, when I came out, I never knew about white divisions because I didn't care of worrying about cutting white and things Did like that. Did you just fight whoever was there? Yeah, so I would just eat and train the time like being an amateur and then I heard like there's this white divisions and when I came out I fought that uh, junior welterweight and the guys were like you're too small for a junior welterweight and stuff like that and I was like huh? Then I started learning about whites and I went down to lightweight mm. Because then I started like getting the picture, like the, these bigger guys coming down. Um, so on the fight, obviously after rehydration and things like that, they bigger, like on the fight night. Mm. So I would seen those kind of things and I went to lightweight. And then I was fighting at lightweight at the time. And then I joined up with, uh, with my previous trainer. He looked at me and he said, no, man, you were featherweight. And plus, you're going to have the reach, reach and height advantage in those divisions. Mm. And then I fought at super featherweight. And then I eventually went down to featherweight. Sure. But it, you felt better, obviously, at that, right? Or Yeah. So then I, then I went to like learning diet, running and mm. how to cut weight and pick up weight properly like now even with 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 Mike because uh he's he, he on my I think my previous fight because it was my first fight with him and he was like how to refuel and like eat fruits and rehydration how to drink water don't just go straight for a meal because you're starving you're hungry you're mm. craving that and that doesn't make you feel like well mm. on the night of the fight so uh, um you I'm still learning. Mm. I will always I will, I will always say it I will always be a student of the game don't matter how old I get. Mm. You know just always stay humble always be willing to learn. That's a good attitude to have because the moment you think you know everything is yeah. the moment you're done in anything in life. Yeah and and boxing humbles you bro. Boxing you literally put your life <laughs> on the line bro every time. Boxing humbles you. You sometimes you you think you that man. Once you step in that ring, and mm. you feel okay, it, it knocks you down to your level. Okay, let me. I must. I must be here. Mm. So, but you you pull that with experience and just go forward with a positive attitude and be humble and focus on 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 your goals, mm. the dreams that you want to achieve. Mm. And tell me now, so but given your story and and of, of overcoming and and obviously, I mean, it's, it will inspire a lot of people, a lot of kids out there. What do you? What kind of message? Other, you know, message you want to put out? You know, through your story. Always oh. believe in yourself. It's never too late. Don't give up. You know circumstances sometimes it can get odd it's like life you know life is not gonna run smooth even i was explaining it today with someone nothing runs smooth between you and with with the people that you have relationships with mm. something will go wrong on the path and you will be disappointed or upset but it's like you work on things that so that it can get better not that it gets worse you know uh, as, as the same like like many of uh, the, the time that when I was in prison um, there's so much guys there there's like there's so much talent there's so much potential that people throw away mm. like everyone has it you never know you could be whoever but you're not unlocking it because sometimes you you, you feel that what other people are going to think Oh, it's too late, or you know. Mm. But for me, is believe in yourself. Never give up, even when times are tough. 
things are going to get better. It's going to get tough again. That is just life. Just keep going and keep going. Mm. It's up and down the whole time, man, life. And and it's true what you say. Like, pe- everyone had a dream at one stage, you know. And at some point, you know, people, people give it up for whatever reason it is. I mean, even there was the... Um, the Ross Kempon gangs. I mean, everybody's seen yes. Ross Kempon gangs. All the, the they were in, um, yeah, they were sitting in the in the White House. It was called, um, and then the guys are saying, "We all had a dream." Yeah, you know, we all had a dream. Everybody, everybody has a dream, and it's it's good that you were able to to get your like to start living your dream and actually have the opportunity to do that. And a lot of people don't get that opportunity. You know, and, and, and then they get setback after setback and, and it's a good message that you're putting out. It is never too late to start your dream. That's true, yes. That's true. We can get lost in this world. There's a lot of things that can drive you away from your true potential. Even people's words. Like today, the platforms are even bigger. You know, uh, I used to be so, uh, like, not to say confident. I was like in what I said and then sometimes I w- when people would say things and I would uh, reflect and then, you know, not knowing that it's pushing myself a little bit back. Mm. And then there was times, you know, I would do interviews and then I would shy away about things, you know, because, because I'm thinking, okay, what is this one going to think or what is this one going to say? Mm. But I've like now, like mentally, I've built myself up again. It doesn't matter what anyone says. They're going to say regardless. So long I'm going forward and what I'm going to get is what I want. Mm. You know, and believing in the higher power. God is the last judge. And we we we, we seek by Him guidance, you mm. know, forgiveness, even though people might be not forgive us or people still see us in the same light, you know? Mm. So regardless. It's true what you say, especially with social media now, everybody's got access to give you their opinion. Yeah. You know, if you, if you <laughs> I always say like, if you ever want to try, get a bit of doubt in yourself, go read some, go, go like check straight when there's a lot of you, comments. Go straight there. You will yeah. see a lot of negative things. Yeah. I see. And, and there was like few groups that I had to remove myself from, especially like this boxing thing. Like, especially fans, yeah. You you'll be surprised what they say about their own people, you know what I mean? That's negative stuff. Negative. negative really? And like, but does does bra he maybe or whoever it is never even stood a day in the ring or could to stand a day in training or month going straight mm. cutting weight staying focused you know with all those things that is happening around us mm. it's never actually the people that even have a chance to come close to doing what you're doing it's usually the people that are not really doing much with them with their life or wanted to do what you did and can't do what you did those are the only people that will ever try to break you down in any situation it's like the people who if someone looks at someone that's that's giving people advice on how to live better and make money, maybe be active, that kind of thing, people will be like, oh, yeah, but he only looks that way because of this. Oh, no, he's only got money because of that, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and you'll generally go look and then it will be like the complete opposite yes. of the person trying to spread the message. You know, exactly. But it does it does take time to 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 block out negativity like that. From people you don't know, but even from people you know, that's the hardest thing is like to cut out people in your life that, don't add any value. That's yeah. a that's a tough that's a tough thing to do, but it, it's a necessary step. It's, it's necessary, especially if you're competing at the level you're competing at. Like any anything that holds you back, you got to compete for that edge. Yeah, you know. And if there's any yeah. negativity, anything that holds you back, it's unfortunate as shit as it might be sometimes to cut you people have out. To. And that can even extend to family sometimes. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, that's really true. I think, I think I read earlier today, like my cousins, we love each other, but my one cousin, she put like, uh, she believes like, she believes in me and I, I don't know how. And then she said like, win or lose, but 
but I'm competing to win, you know what I mean? Mm. She might not might not get the message in that way mm. because no one sees the physical uh, work that I do for this opportunity. And you know, opportunities doesn't come every once. This is now the second time that I'm getting it and I have to, mm. I believe, I will get it on the 24th of August. Regardless, I'm going to get it. Whatever you've got to do. It's a shame, man, because it's for people that are not in it. They, don't, they might mean well. You know what I mean? She might yeah. mean well, but yes. just the fact no, th that I, the thought of losing yeah. or the mention of a loss comes in and all you're thinking about is winning. Yeah. Because the moment you even think like, hey, maybe they can do this, maybe they can do that, you're know, like, oh, shit. Okay, it's just a rabbit hole you go down. Yeah. And of self-doubt, possibly, you know, and that you can't afford that. But it does comes also upon your path, you know, like you will here and there, you will have like, what if this or something like, you know, Mike Tyson, he said that uh, you would dream of the guy beating him he, before the fight, like the, he warms up, he's nervous, like he's afraid of this guy and like just that build up getting there to the fight. And he's putting on the gloves, he's shadow boxing and warming up as he's getting closer to the to the ring. Like he's getting confident, mm. confident, confident until he gets in the ring and then he says, he feel like God, like he's a God in that ring. Mm. And then when he stares at his opponent's eyes, like the guy's looking across, like serious, like about to take his soul. And when that guy just give a glimpse of a look away and then it's like I got him mm. because it's a mental battle man mm. it's like you have to strategize yourself mentally because like in a physical sport some guys are stronger than you you can feel now this guy he punches or they have to be smart mm. and that's just that's the way our boxing is mm. like any sport yeah you can feel maybe in also in MMA this guy is so good in taking me down, I have to stand up with him. Mm. And I can feel that I'm getting the bit of him in stand up. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Just to make an example. Yeah. Bullet, you have to have a bulletproof mindset. You know, it's... um. People it's, people can mean good what's, what things that they say, but you look into detail like, hey, why are you saying... Yeah, why are you saying like, lose? No, man. <laughs> Cut that word out. What yeah. do you mean? Don't you believe in let, me? Let me just rephrase that I'm going to... I'm there to win. Yeah, win so or win. I, I put there in the comment like to uh, I'm I'm gonna win. Yeah. It doesn't matter mm. with the heart and and yeah. Because as, as my family, I know they believe in me. Mm. You know. Yeah. They believe in me. Some some like I say, the people don't see the physical part, what you do at the gym. They just see me the okay now I'm relaxing or you don't really even see me why. Don't post really stuff mm. because I'm so focused. So focused. I don't like thingy post as much unless now maybe a tem camera crew is recording us and that and then put it out on social media because it also give a good exposure mm. out there. Hypes up the oh, fight. Yes. Some people just switch off their social media completely. But mm. in this day and age, it's very tough to do that because sponsors you got a hype yes. events that kind of thing in old days like pre facebook and stuff a lot of athletes used to just turn their phones off mm -hmm. and then like there's actually i don't know um there's a bodybuilder called jay cutler he's like a famous bodybuilder and he said he would disappear for four months mm -hmm. and then his family would like rock up at his house and be like where are you what are you doing mm -hmm. like we haven't heard from you and he said no i'm sorry guys i'm in a bubble for the next four months like I'm, my sole focus is winning is winning the next competition and that's it but in this day and age, you could, you can't go anywhere without looking. You see Facebook yeah. there. There's like a notification. There's WhatsApp. People have access to you. So it's a good thing and a bad thing. Is but it, yeah, it can be good or it can be bad. You gotta have that bulletproof mindset, regardless, though. You know, just the one more thing I wanted to find out from you. So like, also on that documentary on on Ross Kemp on gangs, they uh, I can't remember where it was, but there was a boxing club on that on that documentary as well where there was a guy that was trying to get people from like eras you know where there's a lot of crime and that kind of thing and give people an opportunity to 
to one learn a, like boxing is still a martial art. I mean, it is yeah. it is a martial art. Have that outlet, like you said, you're quite angry, but it's a good way to get 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 rid of that anger, and then also just give people a thing to do so they're not drawn to maybe the wrong things. Like, do you think you know for areas that need upliftment, do you think that's the way of the future? You know, is that the way to get to get areas that need the upliftment uplifted? Active, and it doesn't have to be boxing; it can be anything like that. You know, it's like just just recreational activities. Uh, yes, you know, I believe sport in general is very vital for for youngster coming up young. You know, because you that keeps you active. It keeps you your mind in a in a good space, especially growing up. Because you you get so much guys look at uh you can start boxing at eight or soccer or whatever they become like world champions or you know mm. so it's a good thing it can not maybe on a competitive competitive level it can be good for your health mm. you know it can be good for your mindset because just getting rid rid of all that negative or what happened throughout your day like mm. it's, a, it's a positive way of focusing all that negativity mm. so sports in general for for youngsters you you as a parent must also get them involved or something that they love if they like drawing or want to be a painter or something just to give them the platform to do yes. what they need to do yeah it's it's very powerful because then you know they know whatever happens during their day routine like monday you know you're gonna go play football or yeah. you know you're gonna go do boxing then on tuesday if you're boxing you're gonna go do road work with your coach wednesday you might watch tape like it's it's something to look forward to at the end of the day because when you got something to look forward to it's not a never ending of like when is it gonna change or when is something good gonna happen when is negativity gonna stop you know, okay, this is, might be negative for these couple of hours or bad for these couple of hours. Yeah. Five o'clock today, I'm going to go and spar somebody. I'm going to yeah. get rid of all of that, all <laughs> of that negative energy, you know? Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Just direct that, that negative feeling or whatever you're going through in a positive way. Mm. Instead of negative to negative, it just ends up all bad. Mm adding to the negativity and tell me just the any last message for anybody at home watching your fans anybody yeah i just want to say uh i say alhamdulillah praise be to god firstly for also giving me this opportunity to be here to share my story you know and those who look up to me you know uh for those also that inspire me those who pray for me, those who have helped me thus far, then and now, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this journey. And to where it is still about to go, to my family, friends, all my people in my circle, those near and far. Just want to say thank you. Abdulaziz, I appreciate the time. Thank you for coming through. Looking forward to seeing what you what you do on the 25th well we know what you're going to do on the 25th is win the win the SA title yes. and then i'm very looking forward to seeing what what happens happens after that yeah me too from there then we can we can go on plot again. the next move yes yeah um, i'm looking forward to it thanks a lot for the time again appreciate thank it thank you so much thank you